sun's up already? Uh, uh, good morning! Whoa! Happy, is that you? Where are you? I'm surprised you knew I was here. He just about gave me a heart attack with that impromptu good morning. I wasn't exactly saying it to you, Claudster, but... Oh, never mind. So, you're waking up with the sun, huh? I love it. You're like a step dweller. And what would that be exactly? Oh, you know, those folks who live to the east of Fodlan. But you're also awake. Does that mean you're a step dweller like me? Hey, my motto is the early bird gets the worm. Sounds fake. Oh, but I said it in my most earnest voice. And your face betrayed you. Still, it's surprising how easy you are to talk with. I figured a king would be an arrogant blowhard, but that's not you at all. You're a lot more comfortable to be around than the Emperor or the King of Farius. Not sure if that's a compliment, but it's definitely not easy leading the Federation. I could spend days unloading my troubles on you and only scratch the surface. Sounds like you've got your hands full. Also, please don't unload your troubles on me. <laughs> don't worry, I won't. Still, if it's that much grief, why not quit? You could have someone else take your place if you hate it so much. I mean, the whole thing was your idea, so you should be able to step aside if you want. Sure, I suppose I could do that. But that's not the path for me at the moment. The list of things I want to accomplish is as long as my arm. And if I want to see them become a reality, I've got a lot of work ahead of me. Well then, I guess you've got my support. I mean, all these heady thoughts and ideas are a bit above the level of yours truly. But I can still give support. So, chin up, Claudster. It's all gonna work out. Someone I knew used to say that. A relative, I think? I can't really remember. Well, I appreciate it regardless. It's exactly the kind of thing I need to hear right now. In that case, I'll double down. It's all gonna work out. It sounds even better the second time. Seriously, you should be telling that to everyone you meet. There you go again, putting others first. Yeah, well, it's all gonna work out, Claudster. I just have a feeling. <sighs> the strategy meeting is complete chaos today. Well, we have a little time, so if they want to argue until they're blue in the face, I won't stop them. But I am going to sneak out and find something to nibble on, because I'm starving. Okay, there must be some fruit here. Huh? Hey, Claudster. Hey, Happy. Aren't you supposed to be in the meeting? Yeah, but I got hungry and slipped out. I didn't even notice you leave. You're even more slippery than I realized. Well, it's not like the meeting will unfold differently if I decide to stick around. And since I'm not the only one who skipped out, I guess folks will have to be mad at us together. Ha! <laughs> Guilty as charged. Still, the implications are different for me than they are for the great King Claudster. If someone gets mad at me, it's no big deal but you probably get the wrath of everyone raining down on you for even the slightest misstep. Mm, sad but true. Hey, so I know you love to run out and do stupid stuff like this sometimes, but did you take on all this responsibility because you wanted to? Or would you walk away if you found someone to take your place? I already told you. There's a huge list of things I want to see accomplished, remember? And sure, it's a heavy burden, but that's all the more reason I can't let someone else shoulder it for me. It's up to me to carry my own water here. Then I guess it's not enough for me to just give you my support. What do you mean? 
Well, I'm not really carrying anything at the moment. Water or otherwise. So I was thinking it might be nice to take some of the load from you. Just because you aren't as overloaded as me doesn't mean you don't have commitments. I don't know how I feel about burdening you with my, you know, burdens. Sure, but if you keep it to yourself and it crushes you, that doesn't help me either. I'm not as weak as you think I am. Well, no matter what, it's all gonna work out. It definitely will. You know what? Maybe I'll take you up on that offer of help after all. Whatever you need. In that case, I'll start off with a tough one. How do we handle the fact we skipped out on the strategy meeting? Oh, uh, well, I can't take that off your shoulders, so... I'll stand there and take the scolding with you. Scolding, huh? <laughs> you called it the wrath of everyone like a minute ago. Ah, happy. How are you finding your time in the Imperial Army? Pretty normal, I guess. It's nice to be around a lot of people I don't know. Excellent. For if you were dissatisfied, it could lead to an accident. And I would find that most vexing. Oh, I have my dissatisfactions. Like the way you're talking to me right now, for starters. But if I sighed over every little thing that bothered me, I'd be dead before I took another breath. Yes, quite true. By the by, have you considered my proposition? Though I am loath to discuss it, I am a firm believer in using every resource to its utmost. I don't know. It feels pretty unethical. Even if it is technically something we can do. And did you spare a single thought for how I might feel being used like that? I actually made the proposal based on my estimation of your feelings. I imagine you would enjoy sighing for a greater cause, seeing as you are never able to unleash them freely. And why exactly would I want to sigh, huh? As I am not you, I have no answer to that question. I simply thought it might be... unpleasant. Being the only one prohibited from performing an action others do as a matter of course, that is. Right. Well, no, it isn't. And if you're really approaching this thing without considering my feelings, you're so far off the mark I don't know what to tell you. My. I just thought the woman would enjoy breathing a literal sigh of relief. And to do so in a way where our forces make use of the monsters she summons? Where is the harm? Alas, I suspect I am in for another mocking at the hands of Her Majesty for how often people mistake me for a heartless cad. The Bert? Again? Ugh. Happy. Now that you are calmer, I thought perhaps we might share some tea and treats. But if you're not interested, I am content to deal with them myself. You really want me to buy into this plan of yours, huh? I told you, the answer's no. Now stay away from me. I assure you, I have no such ulterior motive here. Liar. Yes. Well, I can see any further conversation will be fruitless. In that case, I bid you good day. Had I known this would all be for me, I would have made coffee instead of tea. Huh? What's coffee? It does not concern you. Pray forgive my intrusion. Yeesh. Just being near that guy makes me want to sigh. That will be all. 
Speak to the individual in charge for further details. Are we really still doing this? I told you, I'm not mad anymore. But were I to run my mouth excessively, I might well end up angering you again. And as it seems even my apologies can produce misunderstandings, I suspect the pair of us are sadly ill-matched. That wasn't your fault. I should have accepted your apology. I was just being stubborn. <laughs> Wait, that smell. Is that coffee? You know of it, then. You did not seem familiar when I mentioned it the other day. Coco made me some recently, and it was delicious. Sounds like it's pricey, though. There was only enough for me to have one cup. Is that what you usually drink? In as much as it serves as my substitute for tea, yes. However, I find it strange that Constance would consider the price of coffee to be an impediment, given how highly she is compensated. Probably because she's always blowing her coin on materials for her latest experiments. I see. Well then, allow me to invite you not to a tea party, but a coffee party. Wait, are you sure? Because I'm in if you're buying. This is so good. I just can't get enough of that bitterness. Yes, coffee has a full-bodied richness which cannot be enjoyed in any other beverage. To say nothing of the wondrous aroma. Actually, I think the smell on this is stronger than the one Coco made me. As with tea, there are many ways to brew coffee. A noteworthy feature of the beverage is that the final product can vary greatly depending on the degree to which the beans have been roasted. Sorry, beans? This has beans in it? Come to think of it, Coco did mention something about how she had to massacre some beans to make hers. I assume you speak of the grinding process. I must say, I am surprised that you enjoy coffee. It is most unexpected that we would have this in common. There are many who dislike it, and some among that number even go so far as to criticize it as no more than hot bean water. Ah, too bad. Looks like it's gone. There is more. By all means, help yourself. Really? Don't mind if I do. If only I could feel this relaxed all the time. <sighs> Uh-oh. How foolish of me to think that I, of all people, did not anticipate such an outcome. Though it is certainly better than a sigh of displeasure. Regardless, I believe we have some monsters to dispatch. I called them, so I should deal with them. Consider it a bit of light exercise after all that coffee. Ah! Monsters! Monsters everywhere! <laughs> I shall take it upon myself later to mislead them as to the cause of this sudden attack. Thanks, Bert. Now let's get to it. Like there's lots of bugs around here. Go on and eat a bunch and grow nice and big plants. Hey, Bernie Bee. Doing a little garden care? Huh? Oh, uh, yes. Do you need something, Happy? Oh, wait. Wait! Are you here to finish me off and turn me into fertilizer? No! I'm completely devoid of nutritional content. I'm basically just air. No, but if you want to be fertilizer that badly, I'm certain it could be arranged. I just wanted to mention how I'm surprised to find carnivorous plants growing here. 
I was curious who was taking care of them, and now I seem to have found my answer. Yeah, carnivorous plants are my favorites. And mine as well. I had no idea we were such kindred spirits. That's so great! I never thought I'd find another carnivorous plant lover in all of Fogland. Yay! You really don't need to yell like that. So, which one do you like best, Bernie B? There's a lot to consider after all. The aroma, the texture, the way you prepare it. Oh yeah! Some smell nice, and some are just soft as all get out. Uh, but the way they're prepared? Like, how you take care of them? Hmm, I suppose there's a lot of variance there, too. Indeed. So of the ones here, which is your favorite? Maybe... this one. The one that looks like a jug. I like that one as well. It smells divine. And the experience really changes depending on what kind of berries you stuff it with. Can't say I've ever thought to stuff it full of berries, but I definitely see how that would change things. But I also like this one here with the leaves that act like a mouth. They're so teensy and cute, and they blossom with white flowers. I could just stare at them all day. Interesting. I always pick them before the flowers can bloom, so I didn't know that. Aren't the buds wonderful? Of course, wrapping with leaves is great too. Yeah, the buds are unusual. I love them. And it's fun watching the leaves move. I'm happy you like watching them as much as me. Watching? Huh? In any case, now we know we like the same ones. We should have a bite together next chance we get. Anyway, I have to be off. See ya! Yep, next time we'll go out together and... Um... Get something to eat? I... Yes, that sounds nice. Hmm. Hmm. I had no idea these grew outside the village. Oh, um, uh, hi, Happy. Got some fruit there? Yep. I used to eat them all the time when I was a kid. Care for some? Huh? Oh, um, thanks. I'll just have one. Hmm. Oh, wow. It's sour, but also sweet. They're my favorite. With all the edible plant life around here, you never need to worry about being hungry. Well, I suppose I've seen edible plants around, but are there really all that many? Sheesh, I need to get out more. I didn't even notice. But you must have noticed. You raised them. Like the carnivorous one I saw earlier? But I don't eat my carnivorous plants. I'm sorry. Did we or did we not have a long conversation about how delicious they are? <laughs> In fact, I was just thinking that the jug-shaped one would be divine if we stuffed it with grains and... Uh, Bernie Bee? <laughs> huh? Oh, I'm sorry. I was just imagining you eating my adorable little carnivorous plants. Which I have done. A lot, actually. Haven't you? Of course not! Why would I eat my plant babies? Because they're delicious. Okay, that's it. I'm going to cook you up a carnivorous plant feast right now. Come on. Wait, no! I haven't said yes to this! Here you go. Dig in. This is the one with the leaves that act like a mouth. Uh, but instead of bugs, I stuffed it with grilled meat. Oh no! Poor little guy! But... it would 
be an insult to its little plant spirit if I just threw it out, so... What? Well, do you like it? It's my favorite, so I hope it ends up being your favorite, too. Bernie Bee? Was it so delicious you passed out? Okay, come on. Stop kidding around. Hello? I can see you drooling, Bernie Bee. What's this? A stack of pictures? Let's see here. Cat, cat, cat. Scenery. Cat. Sure are a lot of cats here. Oh, and a picture of me playing with a cat. Happy? Hey, Iggy. What are you doing here? I, um, just had something to take care of. Nothing important, though. Happy? What are you holding? These? Oh, I just found them here. One of them is actually a picture of me. I wonder who decided to draw me without bothering to, you know, tell me? Yeah, that's not very nice. You know a lot about art and stuff, right? Any idea who might have done this? Well, it's not easy to determine an artist based on pen strokes alone. Yeah, not that. I wanted to know if you knew anyone else who drew stuff. Hmm. Well, there's a lot of cat pictures, so... Someone who likes animals, maybe? Maybe. I mean, it's a lot of cats. Hmm. <laughs> Um, sorry I wasn't much help. Anyway, I should go. Wait, cats. I didn't mention the cats to you. Oh! Huh. You drew these, Iggy. There's no way you could know about the cats otherwise. Um... You lied to me. I can't believe this. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry I drew you without your permission. That's not what I'm mad about, Iggy. I'm just mad you tried to lie to me. You're right. I did. I'm sorry. I looked really cute in the picture, so all I wanted to do was say thanks. You... looked cute? Yeah. That's why I wanted to know who drew it. So you're not angry I drew you without asking? Pretty sure I just told you that. You're right. I suppose I misread the situation. It's fine. Can I have the picture? Sure. Keep as many as you want. There you are, Iggy. What is it, Happy? Here, for you. Uh, thank you. Did you draw this? I sure did. What do you think? It's really good. Even better than I'd expect. Really? Yes. I feel the raw energy coming from each of your powerful pen strokes. Happy to hear it. So, what can I do to make it better? Let's see. Well, I suppose it might be nice to add a little greenery to the background. The subject is very well drawn, so you can fill the background with color and it will still stand out. Greenery? Yeah, that makes sense. Oh, and maybe you could add some flowers? With a few more details, you can expand your world and really bring out the majesty and mystery of nature. But I don't really need any of that stuff, do I? I mean, that's not the vibe I'm going for. Oh, sorry. Yes, 
prioritizing the impression of the subject as it is now is equally important. Your deer was just so well drawn that I... Well, I guess I ended up including things that I personally like. Wait, you said deer. What deer? Uh, the deer right there. The one that's pretty much the entire subject of the drawing? I didn't draw a deer. Then what's the brown thing? So that's what it looks like, huh? It was supposed to be a guy. Guess I'm bad at this. That's not true at all. I mean, um... Look, you drew me before, so I guess it inspired me to try my hand at it. But it looks like I'm no good, so it's probably time to hang up my paintbrush. No, wait! I can teach you! You can't give up on art just because I didn't understand your work. Well, if you say so, I guess I'll keep going. Huh. <sighs> okay. So, who is this a picture of? It's you, Iggy. Huh? Sorry, did, did you say me? Wait, so what are these horns? Those are your glasses, obviously. That's what those are? Oh, I did it again. I'm so sorry. Coco, I'm not gonna make it. Happy? What in the world do you mean? You look rather unsteady all of a sudden. I'm so sleepy. Why not just end my suffering now? Can you not pull yourself together? You were the one who volunteered for guard duty in the first place! I know, but whenever it's just the two of us like this, it reminds me of how things used to be. And then I get all nostalgic and sleepy. Usually I'd be in bed right now, you know? Well, I cannot deny feeling a little nostalgic myself. I can't believe we're still together after everything that's happened. First we had to help the knights, then we wound up in the Imperial Army. Wild, right? I don't know how to describe it. It's almost like we're best friends or something. Have you already forgotten what you once told me? You said that you would be so utterly lonesome without me to keep you company that it would only be a matter of time before you began to sigh. It was necessary that I stay with you in order to avert certain disaster. I had no choice in the matter, you see? Did I really say all that? You did indeed. It was the very day we left Abyss, if memory serves. All right then, fine by me. I wonder what everyone else from Abyss is up to now. We know Balthus and Yuri are alive and well, and I believe it is likely everyone else is thriving too. Yeah, I think you're probably right. Do you ever wish you could return to those days, back in Abyss? Me? Nah, not really. Most of the people here don't know about my power. They actually treat me like a normal person. Indeed. Plus, you're here. It's like you said, I'd get lonely without my Coco. What about you? Would you be lonely without me? Well, lonely is not necessarily the word I'd use. Hmm, so it's just me then, huh? Okay, fine. I would! I would be positively despondent without you here! There you go. That wasn't so hard, was it? I'm glad you finally admitted it. You knew? Why must you always tease me so? Come on, you were pretty happy when I volunteered for guard duty, weren't you? 
Yes, well, you see, that was because it had already been assigned to me. I merely thought it would be easier to have a partner with whom I was already familiar. Same here. That's why I volunteered. I knew you'd be my partner, Coco. Ugh, I simply cannot win with you. It's Shammy. Ah, happy. Strange. I didn't take you for the praying type. Good. I'm not. Thought so. Then what are you doing here? Just looking for some peace and quiet. This place seemed like the best option. Got it. Should I leave you be then? You're fine. I've had enough silence anyway. You don't strike me as the praying type either. What brings you here? Eh, same reason as you, I guess. I just wanted some more quiet. But I don't mind if you're here, Shammy. Alright, mind if I ask you something then? You just did. <laughs> Kidding. Go for it. It just occurred to me, but you used to live in Abyss, right? Under Garrick Mock? Did you ever see a pagan altar or statue down there? Ah, you mean that big hunk of metal with the giant wings? Yeah, it's pretty hard to miss. Hold on, you know about Abyss? Did you go down there when you were a knight? No, before that. Have you heard of the Dagda and Bridget War? After my side lost to the Empire, I was stranded in Fodlan. Somehow I wound up in Abyss. Soon after I started living there, I ran into trouble with someone from the church. Fortunately, Rhea noticed me, and I got hired by the Knights of Saros. Hmm, let me guess. You got into it with Elfie, didn't you? Elfie? The name sounds familiar, but I'm not sure. Interesting. Anyway, sorry. I kind of interrupted you there. Don't worry about it. So, that pagan statue, it's actually of a Dagdan deity. No kidding. You're from Dagda, right? Yes. I think it was the God of Fate. I always wondered how it ended up there. No clue. It's probably been there forever. You know, I remember there was this one foreigner who prayed to it all the time. Like, really prayed. She must have been from Dagda, too. Most likely. It will have to remain a mystery for now. Thanks, Happy. Is there anything you want to ask me? What? Really? Hmm. Let's see. Shammy, you gotta try this. It's so good. What is it? A pastry? Yep. They were leftovers for once, so I grabbed them. Want one? Hmm. Why not? Hand it over. Mmm. Pretty good, right? Not bad. It's nice to finally find a knight I can just hang out with. Well, former knight. You never cared much for the Knights of Saros, did you? Nope. It's not like I hate them or anything, but... There are just a lot of bad memories. All they do is push people around and make excuses. The same could be said of anyone who's devoted to serving Rhea and the Goddess. Yeah. Except for maybe Al. So, I guess he isn't a knight anymore either. Al? You mean Alois? That's because he has a heart of gold. Even so. The knights had so many rules and regulations. It was a pain. 
Not that I followed them, but still. <laughs> that sounds about right. No one tells Shammy how to live her life. Honestly, I can relate. That's why I ran away from my village when I was a kid. I didn't want to be tied down by their way of thinking, you know? I thought freedom was waiting for me out there. A great big world where I could go anywhere and do anything. It's out there if you know where to look. True enough. All kinds of people are definitely doing all sorts of things. But the harsh reality is, no matter where you go, there's no such thing as true freedom. You can say that again. I wish someone would have told me that when I was a kid. What's it like in Dagda? Pretty similar to Fodlin? For the most part. It felt freer, in a way. But at the same time, more people doing whatever they want means more conflicts. So it's a double-edged sword. Free also means free to fight, huh? I guess. It definitely seemed that way. Maybe too much freedom can be a bad thing. If you're interested, we could visit Dagda someday. I could interpret for you. Hmm, I don't know. It depends on how things turn out in Fodlin. If living here gets rough, I'd probably consider it. Then I guess you have the rest of the war to figure it out. I can help keep you alive on the battlefield, but it's up to you to survive. Uh-oh. That sounded like a pretty knightly thing to say, if you ask me. <laughs> Indeed. I will reflect upon my words. Oh, hey, Happy. You sure like the outdoors, huh? I guess you could say that. Probably because I grew up in a forest. Or maybe it's because I was forced to live in Abyss all that time. Oh, that's right. You were at Garrig Moth, too. I wasn't there for very long, but I never would have guessed there was a whole town hiding just below my feet. Well, it was. I should know. What about you, though? What did you do before hopping into the mercenary business? Before that? Ah, oh, well... I lived with my mom in a village deep in the mountains. Feels like forever ago now. Oh, I call her my mom, but we weren't actually related. She was more like a foster parent. So what was she like? I don't suppose she was interested in magical research, was she? I don't know about research, but yeah, she knew how to use magic. Interesting. How did you two end up living together? I don't really know the details. I can't remember anything from before I was with her. Apparently, I was a foundling. Sadly, finding a starving, abandoned child isn't that uncommon. But for her to take me in and raise me as her own, I think my mom was someone special. Yeah, I guess. She was probably a good person. Something on your mind, Happy? I was just wondering why someone who could use magic was living in a remote mountain village. You know, someone told me one time that she wasn't actually from there. But when I asked her about it, she just gave me this sad smile. Hmm. Very interesting. Seriously, Happy, what's going on? Does it have something to do with my mom? No, it's nothing. Sorry to bring it up. I was just letting my imagination get the better of me. Sorry if I upset you, really. I'm fine, don't worry about it. No big deal. Besides, I'm sure you had your reasons, right? If you ever feel like talking about it, I'm always here. Thanks. Just some old demons of mine. Happens to the best of us. Don't sweat it. You want to head back and get something to eat? 
Sure. Oh, and we can pick some berries on the way. I think I saw some a little bit ago. What kind? After all my time in the mountains, I'm something of a berry expert myself. Hey, Happy. You got a minute? I have several. Need something? So, I heard a little about your past, and I was wondering if you wouldn't mind telling me more about it. I see. So, now you know, huh? Not the most pleasant story. What did you want to know? I was thinking about how you asked all those questions about my mom. And I realized you were probably worried I went through the same thing as you. Yeah, that about sums it up. You do have those mysterious powers after all. When I was little, some strange lady kidnapped me. I became a test subject for her twisted experiments. That's how I ended up with my condition, or whatever you want to call it. Not that it's life-threatening. Safe to say my mom never did anything like that. I'm pretty sure I'd remember it if she did. She didn't really talk much, but I don't think she had a deceitful bone in her body. Her life was kind of just what you'd expect out in a village like that. She did keep to herself, though. Thinking about it more, it's possible she was on the run from someone. Hmm, that does sound a little worrying. But in any event, I'm glad you didn't go through what I did. And unlike me, it seems you've got a pretty good handle on your powers. Yeah, I think I've gotten the hang of them for the most part. But that still doesn't make them safe. One day that sword might overtake me and I'll turn into a monster. Like something out of a fairy tale. If that ever happens, I'll just sigh and you'll come running. Then me and all your old friends would put you out of your misery. Now that's a real fairy tale ending. Oh, that won't give me nightmares at all. But if it ever came to it, I think that's how I'd like to go. <sighs> Mercenaries need to use every weapon and tactic at their disposal. Maybe flinging these powers around isn't such a good idea. But right now, I need to do whatever I can to stay alive. Now honestly, I should probably take a page out of your book and only use them as a last resort. I think that's what makes you pretty incredible, Happy. You've got this power right there, but choose not to use it. I think that means I just gave up. You're way more amazing because you're still trying. No doubt about it. No, you're the amazing one, and you can't tell me otherwise. I don't even know what we're talking about anymore. Anyway, was that all? Because I feel like I need to move. Yeah, thanks for talking with me. You going to train? Yep. Figure it couldn't hurt to put in a little effort. You should come too if you're free. I hope to see you there. Come to think of it, experiments, huh? What did that dream even mean?